know what happened. Uh, Mm, there wasn't much that we were able to get uh, in that email, so we're following up. We're on the case. Good morning, 657. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, I present to you the shining star of the link, the one and only Would you stop already? Jason Solis. Good morning, Jason. Uh, well, truly the shining stars of this show are, are the guests we always bring in, and the the smiles you can see in the KOM News Zoom room are more than apparent because a wonderful forum is going to happen uh, later today. The entire community is invited, as we told you. It is the Equality Forum uh, where the Honorable Francis Tidinko Gatewood, the Chief Judge of the District Court of Guam, uh, will be one of, will be a moderator, Your Honor, or, or the primary panelist? Well, I'm a co moderator with my co moderator, U.S. Marshal. Uh, judicial Inspector, oh, and plus Supervisory uh, Marshal, uh, Tanya Munya. We're, we're co-moderators, and we have a panel of six. Outstanding. And she can, she can tell you who's on the panel if you'd like. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, because I know our friend our friend Glenn, who's podcast about LGBTQ uh, issues and pride, is actually uh, debuting later on today on our podcast network, so we're very proud of that. But So Glenn is one of the panelists. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah! yeah. Glenn's one. Of, yeah, that's right. Right, Tanya. Glenn, is it Glenn Luhan? Is that who you're yes. talking about? Yep. Yes. We'll have um. We'll have uh, Glenn Luhan, who's a teacher. We'll have Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. We'll have Leilani Luhan, who's a Assistant Federal Public Defender. Trinity Hufana. Uh, Dana Benaventi, who's a professional athlete. Julian Uggen, who's an attorney and activist. And we have a special appearance by um. Former uh, Chief Justice and Auditor B.J. Cruz. Very, very nice. And of course, we should say Tan Tanya Munu, of course, the aforementioned, uh, very, very high ranking. And Tanya, I must say, you know, as a former member of our family here at KUM, how, ma how many years did you shoot uh, news and sports here at uh, Camp Happy before you went on to uh, become a marshal? I think it was four years. Four yeah, years. well, she did, she did some very, very good work, everybody, like in the uh, in the late 90s and uh, maybe creeping into the early 2000s, some of the very indelible yeah. images that you saw uh, at KUM of all of the current events and everything like that. Tanya had a direct uh, hand in capturing those for you. So it's, it's good to see you, Tanya. I mean, I've known you since the volleyball community going all the way back to, like, high school, but uh, we're very, uh, very proud of your accomplishments um, as serving, serving our island and serving basically as a U.S. Marshal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a and, pleasure. Yeah, and certainly so. May, may, may I may I say uh, on that line? Uh, I know you're going to go into the subject, but uh, Jason, so it's 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 kind of nice you're bringing me down memory lane because I was a prosecutor on Guam between 1984 to 1994, and when Tanya was a KUAM a camera woman and, and other I don't know what other her, uh, her positions were, but clearly I know she was behind the camera. She would chase after me after a verdict or when I was going into trial with a car <laughs> with Carmen Uchoa. So I it brings back good memories of, of good good reporters and good camera people. Very nice. So so I guess you know we can all say with, with full confidence that the both of you have seen obviously a lot. You've you've documented uh, your honor. You've also um, you know you've heard a lot of the arguments um, that have gone on our island, a lot of those. But one of the things of course that we have that is very unique to Guam is the way that um, our island community embraces our LGBTQ uh, brothers and sisters and those who choose to self-identify in that way. Um, and I know we touched on it, uh, albeit very briefly, the last time we had your on, Your Honor, um, about today's uh, equality forum and everything. But can you give us uh, maybe like an overview again of what some of the uh, the topics to be discussed? And you even said you want to keep this very, uh, very organic and just kind of let, let the conversation happen uh, and then keep it very, uh, very open and honest. Well, yeah, so first of all, excuse me, I, you know what I'll do is I'll let Tanya go through the questions, but I will tell you that how we, we've designed it in, in such a way that it would be very more conversational. Uh, we, uh, Tanya and I have had the opportunity to meet all of the um, uh, panelists, and so we, we, talk, we spoke with them last week just so they could be prepared for this presentation. And so, um, so what we're going to do is initially start off, and um, uh, we're going to let uh, former Chief Justice Benjamin Cruz speak about, uh, you know, really he's, if you will, the rising star uh, as it relates to the whole LBGTQ community recognition. Huh. Right, exactly. Recognition and celebration of the of this uh, community. So um, 
I had a, you know, initially when I, when I spoke to a Chief Justice, I said to him, hey, should we do a Q&A, like a conversatorio, or should we put you on? I didn't think we should put him on a panel. I think he should have been more like a, a, a keynote in the beginning of our program. So we decided that it might be just let him kind of talk about, you know, his life and how he came to the point where he wanted to come out publicly. So uh, as uh, as uh, as a gay uh, person, mm -hmm. and so it, that'll be very nice. And then after that, um, and I, I think I'll, I'll pass it on to Tanya if you don't mind, Jason. Sure. She uh, we've already we've already um, prepared the questions, so she could give you an idea of how our format and what the questions might be. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Tanya. Yeah. So, so you know, first of all, the 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 panel members come from a wide array of of um, professionals in the community, and um, we thought that every that we'd like them to tell us what their journey was like um, coming out. Um, you know, what it was like for them personally, and a, a lot of the questions will be like, like Chief Judge said, it would be fluid. Um, some people's journey is going to be very different than, than, than the other panel members journey. Um, and so, and so you're going to hear a lot about, you know, what went on in their life, you know, um, hopefully, um, things will come out like when they knew, um, they were lesbian, gay, trans, questioning, and, and then from that time to the time where they actually came out. And and what does it mean, you know, coming out? Is does it mean like you came out to your friends, or or is it your family, or you know, is is it just you, you know, you know, in your heart and soul? Um, you're gonna hear, uh, uh, you know, the the journey, and I and I think it's important for our public to understand, you know, what it's like because it's not. We, we feel normal, but for some reason that some people in the community still don't understand, you know, what it, what our normal is, you know, mm -hmm. what it's like um, for, for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, there, especially on Guam um, with the Catholic church, there's an expectation and, you know, there's just, there's just no way um, that, that in your heart and in your mind, uh, it, 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 I, I'm 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 a lesbian, and and there's no way in my heart and my mind that I could change that. It's it's who it's who I am, mm -hmm. and so that journey is important for the people to know, and and it'll come out. I mean, the, the, I think there's a wider range. There's about 14 questions, and I think it'll all come it'll all come together in one, and everybody will will share their experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really appreciate the, like the fact that that the panel that you have assembled. You talk about um, you know. BJ Cruz, obviously, you could, you know, his his resume is like a mile long of the civic ser the civil service that he has provided for the island, and then you've got uh, someone like Trinity, uh, you know, who has won and who advocates for the Queen of the Pacific Beauty Pageant, and she even says, you know, uh, at my core, I'm a Guamanian. You know, we had the good pleasure of interviewing her several times, and she says, you know, she goes, you know, it all comes down to Inafamalik, right? We're taking care of our neighbors, and we're we're loving the other people that share this wonderful island and call this our home. So she goes, it doesn't matter if you went to private school versus public school, if you're from the north, the central, the south part of the island, if you're, you know, if you're Catholic, if you're, if you choose not to believe in anything, like if we call Guam our home, you know, there's a responsibility upon each and every one of us, you know, as she says in her own words, you know, to, uh, to promote the spirit. So, you know, it's, it's all about, about love and about understanding. It, it it really is, you know. There was there was a time, and and um, my my nephew gave us a cup, you know, a bunch of cups that says "Love is love" because it really mm -hmm. just is, you know. Love is love. You love who you love. Um, it, it it doesn't matter who who they are. Um, but you know, I love Leilani, and there's no way to change that. You and know, that's, that's love is love. Mm -hmm. So, well, well, Your Honor, I I got to ask you because you again you have overseen, you know probably countless types of literal testimony throughout your distinguished career, right? Um, and the when you're asking these panelists today to kind of share their stories of, of courage and making the decision to come out and then the actual act of, you know, um, of revealing their truth to their family or, you know, to their community and everything, these are probably stories they've told thousands of times before uh, to so many people. But I'm sure it's going to be uh, a very emotional journey for the entire panel today, for, for each one of them uh, to do that. So, you know, how are you going to handle the, um, 
uh, the revelation of, you know, like, th you know, with the, with the emotional component that goes into this about saying this is who I am and my island should and, and needs to accept me for who I am because I love my island. Well, I mean, that, that's a good question. You know, it, let, let me just back up too. when we were putting this together. And I, I think I told you this earlier, uh, Jason, when you interviewed me earlier, but uh, you know, the administrative office of the United States courts in Washington, DC uh, and the office of fair employment practice, they encourage all the courts to observe LGBTQ pride month each year during June. And, uh, and that is again, to recognize and celebrate the history and contributions of the LGBTQ community. And we have the Ninth Circuit, they had their own um, link and I hope you got to see it. I'm not sure if you did, but I, I, I never, I didn't, I don't know very many gay or lesbian judges or justices other than maybe here on Guam, you know, through, through uh, Chief Justice Benjamin Cruz. Um, but it was interesting to hear even somebody in the Ninth Circuit administrative office who I worked with for 15 years. I mean, yeah, for the last 15 years, Jason, I did not know that she was a lesbian. And, and she said she's been working with the Ninth Circuit for 30 years. And two weeks ago was the very first time she came out publicly to say that this was her life and this was her world. And she talked about how her struggle, you know, kind of made me feel bad. She talked about her struggle being in front of judges who were part of the Ninth Circuit and they did not want to be inclusive. And I felt really embarrassed, you know, like, wow, I mean, that's, we're part of the Ninth Circuit family, but that, but that's all a matter of education. Mm -hmm. so, just, so that just kind of ties in with your question, like how will I handle it? I think, you know, I mean, I'll handle it. I mean, I've heard, I mean, Tanya knows, Tanya's been in court with me a lot of times. We've heard it all, uh, you know, like emotions running very high, very deep, very strong. Uh, and, um, you know, we just uh, come to, uh, I think the main thing is, is to really be educated and to understand. I, I was thinking about when I was a, Superior Court judge years ago, and uh, this this person walked into and I, let me just this person walked into my courtroom and said, "My let, let me just make up a name. My name is George, um, say I, I don't know. I'm just make up a name. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say George Cruz because there's a lot of George Cruz on there. So <laughs> George say, and so he walked in and and but he was dressed like a woman. I mean, he had his long ha hair longer than mine. Mm -hmm. He was wearing a white shirt and a pair of jeans, but look. He, he looked like a woman. So the case was people of territory Guam versus George say, AKA Georgina say. So I'm, I'm in court and his attorney walks in with him, his attorney standing next to him. And I said, okay, so see, this is my lack of education or, or lack of understanding. And I said, um, so how do we address you in front of the jury? Do we say you're George say or Georgina say? And he said, I'm Georgina in a, and, and the lawyer, male lawyer said, oh no, judge, that's George. So I said, okay, let's take a recess. You guys go out and figure this out because I, I don't know if we're gonna confuse the jurors. I mean, or, or, or do we say both? So see, that, that was like in, uh, Jason, that was between 84 and 94, that's mm -hmm. a long time ago. But at that time, I didn't know how to handle it as a judge. I was like getting, even myself, I was like getting confused and thinking, what do I do with the jurors? So the guy, so they walk back in and, and then the, you can see that the defendant was very upset. He goes, your honor, I guess I have to be George, George. I said, okay. So the next day George came to court and now his beautiful long hair, I mean, it was very nicely coiffed and everything was now as short as yours. And now he's going to be a guy. And then, you know, I was just like, okay, I guess you can do that, I guess. But anyway, so that, that has been my experience. And, and at, at that time, I, I just, now I realize, thinking back, wow, I, I wish I I wish I knew more. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have been more sensitive. But I thought I was being sensitive by saying, how do we handle this with the jurors? I didn't know it. Anyway, so how I'm going to handle it, I think I'll handle it like I handle everything else. Just go with the flow. And Tanya, okay. Tanya will probably say the same thing, right, Tanya? Yep, absolutely. I think the panelists themselves, I mean, they, they can quite honestly take over. A lot of them are, you know, well-versed in talking and, and speaking. And the, the only difference here is they're, they're going to talk about, you know, things that are so personal, things that are, you know, maybe not too many people know. And I think that's the most interesting part of this is that the, the dynamic, you have a teacher, you have the lieutenant governor, you have an activist, you have, you know, um, a variety of, of professionals that are going to talk about, you know, the different journeys. Some people left the island, 
Um, I watched Leisha Castile's um, video about her journey and, and you know, uh, um, and, and, you know, she, the, the thing, her last uh, comment was, you know, if I could tell my younger self, it'll be okay. I think that's the most important part here now is because, because there's so much um, um, inclusivity now and, and there's so much awareness that, that, that will be okay, you know, and, and there's, there's, you know, um, communities and nonprofits that can help, you know, with folks that are struggling with their journey to come out to, to, to be with the community, with their community and, you know, feel normal about going about your way. You know? if, I, if I may, so, Tanya, so like, I think, yeah, let me, let me ask, because I think as part of a proper uh, discussion, and I know you guys have, you know, like, a, you know, put this together and it is going to be very important for our community. Uh, in order to achieve progress, I'm sure the both of you would agree, you're going to have to address like some of uh, the more uncomfortable or probably some of like the darker uh, topics and everything. So, uh, so Tanya, in your view, um, even though, you, like you said, Guam is very inclusive, we really embrace um, the LGBT community. We always have like, um, you know, like I said at the beginning of this interview, you know, um, when I was playing volleyball, you know, it was a known thing that what, maybe a third, 40% of the volleyball community uh, was at the time you, you, you would say either you're gay or lesbian. And it was never a thing. It was like, these are people that have a right. shared love of our sport. If you're my teammate, you're gonna help me uh, achieve our goal, which is to win. And it was never an issue. It was always this wonderful community and wonderful family that we had. Um, yeah. but I, I guess my question is, you know, what are some of the issues in your view uh, that continue to linger and that can hold back some of the progress uh, that, that we all wanna see? You, you know, so so just just the burning of the flag in front of the legislature is is telling that th there are still people that 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 don't don't appreciate or, or don't accept you know our look look at the flag i mean it's so beautiful it's so fun it's so um opening and it's so and you got two of them right behind you <laughs> yeah yeah that's why i said look at the flag so i mean how can you not accept it in in there there are people there are folks that use derogatory or they use terms and they use it um, in a derogatory nature and its context is derogatory and some people don't know that it's derogatory and this is you know this panel you know it, it'll bring it out you know what what are what what certain terms are that are triggers you know to describe you know a certain per, uh, a person you know a, a feminine person mm -hmm. And, and, you know, that, that just brings me to, I, I remember a time in high school at GW, my friend, Andrew, my dear friend, Andrew, he was effeminate and he got picked on. He's a big guy and he got picked on until finally there was a fight and he won the fight. And then all the days after everybody got suspended, all the days after he could walk down the hallway with pride, you know, cause he's like, okay. And they didn't pick on him after that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. I'm effeminate, but you know, I'm still a human being and I still, you know, you know, can, can defend myself. And, and that was just, 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 there, there are just some folks out there. And, and, and sometimes I feel like maybe the, their religion um, prevents them from seeing the human being, you know, their religion holds them back from accepting the person that, that they are. So, mm -hmm. and hope, hopefully with this panel today, I should say like, it's pretty much a guarantee your honor that, you know, the discussions you're going to oversee are going to be able to have that that common understanding and, and that knowledge of you know of of the environment and, and what we all need to do because you know hopefully we won't have to get to the point i mean knock on wood it doesn't where people have to throw fists in order to just like get you know earn respect and gain that understanding and then they wind up like being in front of you in your court well, I think I you know Guam is like you said you talk about the anaphomalic spirit uh, Guam is just, I think, very um, welcoming and very diversified and very loving, the people are, and, and they're very forgiving. And so what I always find so interesting, like like Tanya said, is there, there may be people that are gay or are lesbian or trans and so forth, but they haven't come out yet. They still haven't come out publicly. Mm -hmm. It's very, whatever for whatever reason, it's painful. You're scared of their mom and dad. What, you know, the religion, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of issues. And as, as you know, you talk about some of the issues, like Tanya just talked about the flag burning. Well, I mean, 
issues that are going to hit the courts are already hitting the courts include sports since Tanya is a big sports person, but including a trans person on a sports team uh, that they identify with in terms of, of, of their, yeah, their sexual identity or um, uh, the bathroom, the bathroom issue, you know, where do you place these individuals who are trans? I mean, th that is so controversial. I mean, it hasn't hit our courts yet. Yeah, I, but it has hit the courts in the mainland. But that's something that's that's also percolating, at, and that's going to be um, coming up. I'm and sure. Unfortunately, uh, like at least two of the members of your panel today, like are, are well versed in in public policy. So I know that's going to do a lot of good. You know, for for those kind of questions and uh, and and for those those discussions that need to be had. Yeah, and you know, one of the things you know, Tanya had talked about some of the different um, uh, uh, professions. We also have a sports athlete. Uh, Dana Benavente, and then Glenn Lujan's a teacher, right, uh, Tanya? Mm -hmm. He's yes. A teacher, right. And T Trinity, um, I know she she ran for uh, Miss Pacifica, but yeah, you're and Lelani Lujan's an assistant, you're the first assistant U.S. federal public defender on Guam, uh, who who's a lesbian, and and even a Chamorro, who you know, I mean, both are she's a trailblazer in her own right in that regard. So we do have like like Tanya said, diver a diversified panel. Um, I wish we could have put in people like Bill Pesh and the two women who were in my courtroom, mm -hmm. uh, the 2018 case, you know, uh, but, but, you know, these names were recommended highly. I mean, there's just so many other wonderful individuals. And I think that, that these uh, individuals in particular will be a really good uh, representative mm -hmm. sample. And I, I don't know if um, maybe, Tanya, if you were aware of this, but one of your panelists, you know, again, you know, like our friend uh, Glenn Luhan, the educator, um, he was on our show sometime last year and he actually had an audience on this very program uh with the archbishop and they were just talking about you know some of the uh some of the ongoing issues about you know like if i choose to live my life as a gay man and this is this is how i i believe and how i choose to self-identify and everything like that you know what does that do as far as my spirituality because glenn also is a is incredibly devout he's a very very involved um participatory member of the church um and, uh, you know, he, he wanted to speak directly to the Archbishop and His Excellency, you know, actually um, had a very good conversation with him. Yeah, I, I think, I think um, the panelists will discuss um, religion and, and what it's like for them. Um, for me personally, I, I struggle mm -hmm. a lot with what is said um, in church and then how they treat you and how you're perceived. Um, you know, I, I, I cannot be a godparent, but here's, you, you'll take my money, you know? So yeah. that, that's, that's, that's a big struggle, uh, for, for me, the, the hypocrisy, but, but that's not for me, you know, I'm not a panelist. That's just my personal feeling and my, my journey, but the, the panelists will talk about it because a lot of them have way more, um, to say. Yeah, the lieutenant it. governor went uh, through that very scenario last year too, and he again he was on this show, and he he goes, you know, I've he goes. By the way, I've also got several godchildren already. It's just that now that it's been, you know, it's it's very well documented that he is uh, the country's first openly gay lieutenant governor to be elected, and we're very proud of that, all of us as Guamanians. But he said that now that that's kind of, um, you know, like out and about, like the the church was saying, you cannot be a godparent anymore. So he came on and he shared. That with us, and like you said, he he goes, you know, like I I don't necessarily agree with it, and I'm very hurt by it. But you know, he shared his thoughts as well. Okay, so yeah, but I'll, but I'll, I'll tell you about you know the folks that asked me to be a godparent. My that role is so um, sacred because they're choosing me in the event something happens to exactly. them that I'll you know I'll take over and and raise the child. And you know, it 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 just because I struggle with the teachings doesn't mean that I don't know what it. How, you know how to to lead a Christian life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've grown up that way, and and if that's the parents' um, choice, then that's what I'll carry carry forward. You know, I don't I don't necessarily. And I told them I was like, I don't necessarily need to be on a piece of paper, but I'll be there for your child, and I'll be there for you no matter what. And that's that inafamalic. That's how we do here. That's how we do as a community. That's also what you have on your coffee cup. You said both of them. Love is love. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, can, well okay. can I say, you know, um, uh, Jason, I, I'm so glad uh, Tanya is going to be my co-moderator because, 
when we put this together, you know, at the um, at the encouragement of the administrative office, who, you know, the administrative office director, as you may or may not know, the director is appointed by the Chief Justice of the United States of America. So, um, so we, you know, so this is, you know, the Ninth Circuit is a, a trailblazer in and of themselves. But when we put this together, I'm really glad that Tanya agreed to be the co-moderator because she has that experience on a daily basis. Uh, and so that to me is extremely important. In fact, when uh, um, the original moderator would, was supposed to be um, Judge Berdalio and, and, and Judge Berdalio would have been a really good co-moderator because his sister is a, a, is a uh, trailblazer uh, doctor, a lesbian, uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, just very supportive of the, of the community. So, um, so when Judge Berdalio and I discussed the, the, uh, the, the, uh, this particular uh, presentation, um, you know, he, he said he wanted to do it, but was unable to do it because he would be off island. So I'm glad Tanya's, Tanya's uh, there. <laughs> she, I think, she, you know, I, I'm going to learn a lot more than, than she, she will have to ever learn. <laughs> Well, we issue, we, so we all hope to, to learn like a, a lot. So, um, Tanya, I'd like to give you the honor of uh, just telling people uh, what time is it? We've told people uh, it's it's sponsored by the Guam Bar Association, but you don't have to be a lawyer. You know, it's it's free for the entire community today. Correct? Yeah. Yes. And um, there's a Zoom link available if if the courthouse reaches capacity. So it's Tuesday, June 29th from 11 to 1 p.m. Um, and we hope to we hope to. Uh, have um, a great a great group of people participate and learn and and get excited about um, this month. Fantastic, fantastic way to close out the month. All right. Well, we are going to be there as well, and and we we applaud the both of you for uh, for putting on this event and for for donating some of your time so that all of us as as Guamanians and just you know just citizens of the world and everything like that can can learn and can um, uh, can be better people. Because like you said, love is love. Can can never say that enough. Love is love. Yes. Viva! 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 <laughs> all right, thank you very, thank you very much, Tanya. Good to see you as always, and again, thank congratulations you. on on all your success uh, as a marshal. And your honor, always a pleasure. Well, thank, thank you, you, Jason. And uh, and and it's it's not only sponsored by the Guam Bar, but it's also sponsored by the Federal District Court of Guam, FYI. And we understand. We just got word that the governor and I think the first gentleman are want to be at, at, in attendance. All right. So that's kind of uh, considering the fact that the first. Lieutenant Governor of the Nation uh, is is going to be a panelist. So uh, I I just received word of that uh, on Friday. Fantastic. So thank my, my my apologies for not you. saying that the district court was also a, like also a presenter. <laughs> I want to make sure I stay in your good graces. Trust me. <laughs> You're fine. Thank you. Take All right. Care. Thank you very thank much. You. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, everybody, and we'll see you on the flip side of this break. Much more coming up right here on the link. Stay with us. It's a gorgeous Monday morning, and we got a lot more coming up after this. KUAM News, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike, as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment.